Hello and welcome back to AmbiV. I'm Casper and today we're going to finally update everybody on what happened with the Viper, what's happening with the SR240Z project, and check out a couple new vehicles in the shop. It's been a long time since I teased you all with my thoughts on getting rid of the Viper and I just haven't done another video so here it is. So to start with the status of the Viper and the Yamaha FZ1s is that they've been sold. Now the Viper was a good car, it just kind of had a few things that bugged me from day one, but ultimately it didn't quite fill the role I wanted. I wanted a crazy car. That was supposed to be the car that scared me when I went out and got it. I was using it as the daily driver. Other than the fact that it was a little too low and wide for some driveways, it was a pretty much perfectly practical daily driver. And it was way easier to drive, especially fast, than most of the other cars I have in here. So I kind of lost interest in it and I really didn't want to cut up such a decent car to make it what I wanted. So I went ahead and sold it, sold the two bikes, picked up two new bikes and got the white Z back from the tuner. So before we run through all the rest of the cars in the shop, you probably see the Mustang with its hood up. That's because the Mustang blew up a transmission. I was tuning it and the transmission just went out, all forward gears gone. So that was a good chance to rebuild the C4 because it has like several hundred thousand miles on it. And I was going to, I bought another transmission to swap in to get it back on the road quickly. But unfortunately that transmission has problems. When I first got it, I filled it with fluid, did all the normal burping process, running it on the on the lift and stuff, running through all the gears, got pressures all tested good, got vacuum to it all tested good. Took it out for the first spin and it popped the seal out of the front of it at the uh, pump. Never seen a transmission do that before. Have no idea why it happened. Sent it to the local transmission shop. They said, couldn't have been something I did. It just looks like the casting on the pump's funky. They replaced it with a metal one that was better quality than what the manufacturer had put in there. And then we tested it for a little longer and lost overdrive. And now we don't have reverse, but sometimes they come back. So rather than tinkering with it, since the transmission is effectively new and it's a performance transmission that's supposed to be able to handle way more power than this, this engine can ever put out, I can't really tinker with it myself. I don't know enough about it and it's under warranty. So this car is now just sitting here waiting until the warranty issue gets resolved. And I think that's probably gonna involve me just taking it to the local transmission shop because I want somebody else to be available whenever they do wanna talk about it. I'm not gonna put the manufacturer of the transmission on blast yet. If they stand behind it, take care of it, then that's what's important. It's just really time consuming dealing with any sort of warranty issues. It's just really annoying. Now out here in the other part of the shop, the white 240Z is back. It came back from the tuner. We cleaned up the fuel maps a ton, got a lot more dyno time on it, and now it runs really good. There's a few little hiccups here and there that I'm still tuning out because I want it to drive almost like a factory car, but it made 386 horsepower at the wheels on the last dyno tune, and that was actually trying to turn it down. We are getting close to the efficiency max of the turbo. It's just a little 2871, um, and it's a bottom mount system, so I don't have much room down there to work with it and stuff. But power wasn't the goal. It's only got 300 miles on it since it's been rebuilt. We still haven't got the thing really even fully broken in yet, um, but we're making probably mid 400s at the crank, so that's plenty. The car weighs in at like right around 2,300 pounds, so that's gobs of power. Compared to the Viper, it's a lot faster. Um, you're talking almost the same amount of crank horsepower, but over a thousand pounds lighter. So quite a lot quicker. Now you might hear some weird squeaking and stuff in the background. That's because there are baby chicks. Hiding out down there. They're just living in the shop for the time being till they can go out to the chicken coop. The Triumph TR6 is still here. It's being driven periodically. Ultimately, that car is going to go somewhere else, but I don't know where. It can sit for six months at a time and just be started right up like nothing's wrong with it. The electronics on it now are pretty great. It just needs time being debugged and checked out and stuff, but no one's really driving it enough. The 55 Buick is still sitting here getting covered in spider webs and dust because it's my lowest priority project and it needs weird stuff done with the front suspension. The 1940 Chevy was being driven out on a like mother-daughter trip 
and my fiance said it started making noise and it seems to be making some sort of noise near cylinder one almost sounds like rod knock um, so it's been parked here till I can pull the Chevy 350 apart and figure out what's actually making noise. Oil pressure still seems fine, so it drives around and stuff. I just don't want it driven very far in case it blows up. Now, the two Yamaha FZ1s went away to make room for these bikes. Here we have an Aprilia Tuono. I think that's a 2018. And the Z900 RS Cafe, which is a 2022, I think. 2022, must be. That one I bought for my fiance to be her new primary bike. It has the perfect ergonomics. It has basically unlimited horsepower for whatever she wants to do when she's out riding. And the electronics make it super easy to ride. I mean, as soon as I rode that bike the first time, I knew it was a perfect bike for her. Also, the ergonomics of this bike are amazing for shorter riders. She can sit flat footed on it and she's pretty tall. She's 5'10", 5'11". She can sit on that bike, absolutely no problem, but even my shorter friends who are around 5'8 ish say that the bike fits them really well. So it's just a good bike for slider riders. It has almost telepathic handling how well that thing handles, but you really notice every pound of air pressure loss on the tires. So the older tires that are on it are definitely going away this winter. The Z900 RS I picked up from the dealership brand new. Um, that bike's just great. I put like um, 1,500 miles or something on it in the first couple weeks that I had it. Took it on a trip all the way across the state. Um, runs great. I went ahead and have already modified the heck out of it just because. So it has levers and it has the undertail eliminator that everybody does. I went ahead and took out the mid pipe and the headers and uh, replaced those portions of the exhaust. I went ahead there's just like lots of little aesthetic and changes. Obviously the mirrors are different, stuff like that. Um, I'm probably mostly done messing with it. I just wanted it a little bit customized and tweaked to what I was doing with it. It's a great bike. I'll do a video on just the bikes coming up for those people who are really interested. Um, there aren't that many good videos on these bikes. The people who review them, review them as generic reviews. They don't really talk about some of the real high points to them. So I think I'll probably do that. Well, that'll give you guys at least a good wrap up of what happened. The Viper's gone. So for those of you who are really excited to see more videos of it, I'm sorry, it just didn't quite make the cut. If you have a Viper like that and you really like it, this isn't a bad thing about your car. Hope you're enjoying it. I just didn't really enjoy it for how much I was spending on it. Now, if you're interested in the white 240Z project, that one's gonna be coming up a lot more in the videos because I need to put a lot of miles on that thing and do a lot of tuning. I've also found a lot of weird little strange things in the wiring and the tuning processes. So I'll be putting out some videos just giving people advice on weirdness of completely custom systems like this, because it's always good to have videos to find that have similar problems to your own if you run into them. Thank you all for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.